Hello and welcome to Ask the Consistory, a video podcast produced by the Confessional Orthodox Evangelical Lutheran Communion. I'm your host, Roland Magnus Sørensen, pastor in Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church in Denmark and uh, superintendent of the Coelk. Today we are going to uh, deal with uh, the subject of justification and specifically the discussion about universal objective justification as part of a series on that topic. I wrote a paper uh, some years ago and uh, has been writing have been writing some more about uh, that issue. Um, now the question is is there such a thing as a universal objective justification? What is universal objective justification? Well it is um, in some way to claim that the world uh, has already been justified uh, prior to faith. Um, and that uh, and it can be construed in, in different ways and we'll deal with that later whether some ways of, of saying it are uh, can be reconciled with with the biblical and Lutheran doctrine but uh, first we'll look at whether scripture teaches, Universal objective justification, whether scripture teaches that all men are justified uh, independent of faith. Um, we can't uh, discuss that from passages that deal uh, only with reconciliation or redemption or atonement, uh, or with terms that are somehow related to the doctrine of justification, like forgiveness and regeneration. Rather, we must uh, deduce doctrine from clear passages that deal with the subject uh, that we want to discuss. Now there might be more passages, but we will look shortly on uh, some of the passages that have been used to defend universal objective justification. And one of them is uh, Romans 3, uh, 23 to 24, where it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The point is that the all here refers, uh, the, the point made by those who defend universal objective justification is that the all uh, who have sinned and are justified here refer to all people and, and therefore they say all men are already justified. There are at least two considerations that make this uh, uncertain. First, the nearest possible antecedent of the all are not all men, but all who believe in verse 22, where the same uh, word all is used. So the most natural reading of this is that it is speaking about believers and not about all men at all times. Secondly, justified in verse 24 is a present participle, participle uh, combined with a present tense ver verb. Uh, now it has been argued by some that uh, uh, that the tense form itself excludes excludes reference to a one-time justification in the past. There is some discussion about the temporal meaning of Greek verb forms today, so we cannot say that with certainty that the present tense form makes uh, refers to present events. Now, the present tense form is, however, as, uh, is, is often used in what is called economic sense, stating a general truth uh, rather than something that has happened. Uh, Campbell says in his uh, basic, Basics of Verbal Aspect in Biblical Greek, page 65, um, Present tense forms can depict economic actions which are universal and timeless. Economic actions art is created through the combination of imperfect, imperfective aspect and context in which generic statements are made. And with imperfect, imperfective aspect, he means uh, present and, and imperfect uh, tense forms, uh, which, uh, and he's part of that, that school of thought that, that thinks that Greek verb forms uh, express aspect uh, more than they express uh, uh, absolute time. Uh, an imperfect aspect is that uh, where you are kind of in the middle of the events and looking at them. It's, it's kind of a perspective on the, on the events, that you are very close to the events. And, and, and this can be used in economic 
uh, uh, actions art uh, where where you uh, where it's, it states something that is universal and timeless. So the meaning could it be could be rather than that uh, all men were justified in the past that this is the way in general that all men can be justified. Uh, it seems to be such a generic sta a timeless statement, so it, it doesn't necessarily refer to a justification in the past, but rather to something that happens continually through time for those who believe. So, this uh, text does not prove that all men have already been justified prior to faith. Now, second uh, verse often used is Romans 4.25 where it says about Christ that he who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. It is claimed by some that this means that the resurrection of Christ was the justification of the world, or at least a justification of us before we came to faith. Others claim that the second use of the preposition dr must be understood as causal uh, or retrospective rather than final and prospective because that is how it is to be understood in the first part of the verse, is their claim. Now the hour of the text, our trespasses uh, and our justification, uh, this hour refers back to us who believe in verse 24. Therefore the text cannot be used to prove universal justification. Uh, the preposition dr is used in both verse 23 and 24 with the accusative uh, and um, while it might be interpreted as retrospective in verse 23, it certainly isn't in verse 24. So uh, it can be used in, in different senses in, and is in the context. Uh, since there is a parallel also in 23 to 24, it is possible to have a parallel of two instance, instances of the preposition without both having to be either retrospective or prospective. Now, finally, it is doubtful whether our sins refer to something that existed before the death of Christ, because in both cases it didn't. So some of those whom Paul wrote to might have lived and sinned before the death of Christ, but they had all sinned afterwards too, and some of them probably didn't live when Jesus died. So if one was to, uh, to, to make this parallel and say that we were already justified before, before uh, the resurrection of Christ, and that our justification resulted in, in his uh, resurrection, one would have to, to, uh, to argue for that parallel. One would have to say that we also sinned before, uh, that all our sins happened before the death of Christ, which certainly isn't true. So, so this uh, parallel doesn't really work and, and can prove a universal or objective justification. Now the next text uh, I'll take is Romans 5, 18 to 19, where it says, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and, li and life for all men. Um, now, the problem with this passage and using this passage is that there's no verb in uh, verse 18, which mainly consists of prepositional phrases um, that all show some kind of direction against something. It's the preposition eyes that is used again and again. And uh, this in itself, in itself makes the verse unclear. And, uh, and and it must therefore be interpreted through the clear passages, and we cannot deduce a doctrine of universal objective justification from it. And it might be more of a general statement, just like uh, Romans 3, 23 uh, to 24. Uh, it speaks about how we are justified. Um, and then finally, uh, the last uh, Bible text I'll uh, look at this time is uh, 2 Corinthians 5.19. Where it says, that is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Now, it is sometimes claimed that this text teaches that all men have already been justified, since their trespasses are not counted against them. 
Now there are several unclarities here. Paul does not write all men here. He writes the world. Whether the world in this passage deals with all men, or whether it is a generic statement about ungodly men in general, uh, as when it says in John 16, 8, that the Spirit uh, will convict the world. It doesn't say that everyone will come to faith. It just says that that uh, uh, it will convict the world. Uh, we can't say me merely from the word uh, the world that it uh, necessarily speaks about all men at all times. Now, some have interpreted it as Christ's work when he preached here on earth, and that's also possible and makes the, the text less clear. Uh, but we can't prove universal objective justification from this text. So, there are no clear texts that say that all men have been justified uh, in the death or the resurrection of Christ. And in order for, some, for us to make something doctrine, we have to, um, we have to uh, be able to point to a status doctrine, to a clear scriptural passage which teaches this, or from which this teaching can be deduced. Um, now we'll uh, look in the next video on uh, on how uh, how justification is understood in the Book of Concord.